Just to start off, could you tell us what initially inspired you to join the project for the deep sea exploration with James Cameron? Well, that it's a little tricky because there was a uh, there was an accident initially. I mean, uh, the project had been in development for seven years. Wow! And I'd known about it, uh, but there was a, sort of a tragedy uh, on the first day of shooting, okay. uh, which. I had done two other deep ocean expeditions with Jim in the past to Titanic. Um, and so I got a call, would I come in and continue uh, filming on the, on the project? So, so it's it was sort of like a last minute thing? Yeah, although I was, gonna, I was going, uh, but I was going to just be part of it, and take pictures, okay. experience it, have, have you know, go on uh, and get another. Uh, we we're going to Papua New Guinea. So it's one thing, the main thing I wanted to do was that, and, and just encourage him, you know, be there as a friend uh, when he did his die. So, um, but yeah, there was this tragic accident, which is uh, documented in the film. Okay. Um, and can you tell us from an artistic perspective, you know, we're SCAD students, we have a lot of visual effects or film majors who'll be watching this. Mm -hmm. What sort of research did you do to prepare for directing the film? I know it was last minute, but where did you look to sort of gain uh, helpful information about what you're about to do? Uh, as far as information or preparation, um, in 1995, I went on, the, uh, I was part of the Titanic expedition to right. prep uh, and, and, and photograph the ship, which uh, the footage in the movie Titanic of the submarine, I was in Mir 2. Wow. Um, the lighting, was in a lighting sub, and I was diving on that particular expedition with uh, Al Giddings, who's a famous uh, underwater cinematographer, uh, who is also our cinematographer on uh, The Abyss, the movie The Abyss. Um, the second expedition was 2001, where I was second. I was a producer, but I was also doing behind the scenes and second unit. Uh, and I dove on the Titanic again, two di additional dives with Bill Paxton. And that that movie was an IMAX film, so I had a lot of experience. Uh, I knew how to film in the open ocean. Right. So uh, when I got the call, I had 72 hours. Wow. And I had a. I sort of had the, the outline of what was being planned, mm -hmm. and what I had to learn was who are, you know, who who are the, the the principals other than Jim, okay. the sub crew, the the, the scientific, uh, the geologists and the uh, bacterial uh, specialists, in deep ocean. Who are all the scientists? What are all their names? Who's who? Wow. Where can I shoot? What is the equipment? And on the on flying to Australia. I just spent my time trying to trying to get the, the, the names together. I already knew how to shoot. You're you're sort of stuck when you're on a when you're on a ship in the open ocean. Yeah. Uh, there's only so many places you can shoot from. But I knew the type of shots needed from the previous expeditions. Okay. Um, and so the film is in 3D, right? Right. What went into the decision to make it a 3D film? Uh, as far as shooting in 3D, Jim Cameron is, you know, he's the, the biggest uh, proponent of 3D. He brought it back from obs obscurity for the movie uh, Avatar. Okay. And so everything he does is in 3D. But uh, film being seen tonight is 2D. It's very interesting, the process of, of 3D. It's basically two cameras next to each other. Uh, one camera is locked, and, and you it's a 2D version of mm -hmm. the film. It's, you can run it on television. The 3D, uh, the, the other, what we call the right eye, is the other camera, can move and, and give you depth and interocular. That, um, that's, what, that's what is 3D for 3D films. Cool. You don't use that. You still have a 2D version of the movie that's exactly the same. Okay. And, and that's what we'll be seeing tonight. I, I've never seen the film in 2D, so this will be interesting. Indeed, it will. <laughs> um, and so, have, do you have a way that you sort of prefer to shoot? Do you prefer doing only 2D, or you do, do you like working on films where it has an extra 3D camera? Uh, 3D is a little more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, you need a stereographer, but, uh, and the cameras are a little bit larger. 
um, the uh, it doesn't really matter to me. Um, but most of the films I've done have been 2D. I mean, they're, they're all a lot of sum, summer films. It depends. And, um, there's also a way to convert uh, convert 2D to 3D that's being done on some of the big summer movies. So, okay. uh, uh, either way, that doesn't bother me. You were good with both. And then uh, I'm curious from a time commitment perspective, because you have usually work on special effects mm -hmm. teams in, um, in usual movies. So how does it compare when you were the director of the film? Did you still kind of walk the film all the way from directing it through post-production, or was it a different relationship with the time process there? Well, uh, in most every film, I mean, I've, I've worked with Jim Cameron for more than 25 years. And um, my background in visual effects uh, means as a supervisor, I start from the script and visualize with drawings and storyboards all the visual effect shots and sometimes overlapping, fitting them into live action so there's no, there's no jump okay. in, in a camera position. So I'm generally, in every film I've done, I've, I've been uh, almost the first hired. Because I also illustrate wow. the storyboard everything. Mm -hmm. Take it through the planning of what how the visual effects will be done, how that integrates with the production design and the director of photography. Um, I work closely with them. And then once principal photography is done, everybody goes, and I work with the editorial to complete all the shots visually. Wow. So I, I, gen I, work, I work longer on the film than most people yeah. uh, in visual effects. Okay, and so as a director, it was very last minute too, so that was different. Uh, I mean, I've directed I've directed feature films. I did a film, Virus, a film here in uh, Wilmington, mm -hmm. North Carolina in 1996, and then uh, um, I directed Star Trek Voyager television show for two seasons. Cool. That was, that was fun. <laughs> I actually enjoyed that. Interesting. Yeah. And um, mm. documentaries. Okay. And so we have a lot of SCAD students right now who are seniors mm -hmm. directing their senior films. Oh. What piece of advice would you give to them as they go about being directors for their films? Um, trust in yourself. Uh, nobody knows how documentaries will end. <laughs> Interesting. Um, we had no idea how this film would end. Mm -hmm. On the previous documentary I did, uh, we ju you just have to kind of think ahead and plan ahead. Mm -hmm. and, and uh, there's a thing called Murphy's Law, which is always in effect. <laughs> Murphy's Law is uh, whatever can go wrong will go wrong. So what's your backup plan? Mm -hmm. So you always have to have a backup plan. Uh, in in the, the films I worked on, always a lot of a lot of thought, a lot of planning has gone into them to find out on the day you're going to shoot something just went out the window. Wow. So what, what are you going to do now? So you have to trust in yourself. Uh, be committed. Mm-hmm.